Good morning. It's another bank holiday, boys and girls. Monday, the 29th of May, 2017. And a warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk. As always, coming to you live from the Mirable Studio in Royal Berkshire. Yes, indeed. How do you know if it's live? Well, if it's just coming up to, if it's just gone 9.30... On Monday the 29th of May 2017, at wherever you are in the world, we are live. If it is another time, you are watching a recording. But it doesn't matter, you can still join in. Do not worry. Don't you think those little messages that you write once the show is finished go unnoticed? Because they don't. Although I have been forgetting to read those out recently, have I? I must admit. Now, uh, before we start today... I'd just like to dedicate uh, today's uh, programme to uh, a very old uh, friend of mine, not old as in age, but uh, I've known him a long, a, a long time, uh, Joe, who died uh, unexpectedly at the weekend. Here's a little picture of Joe. OK, that's uh, quite a few years old now. He, he looked like that when I knew him. And um, I knew him from when I used to work uh, DJing in a place called Harpo's Bar, which was in Ells Court, and uh, got to know him there, along with uh, several other people. And was a, was, there was a kind of a group of us, you know, I was the DJ, and they were kind of uh, friends that I made over a period of time. And uh, he would come there virtually every single night I was there, Harpo's. He'd come along to Reflex uh, a couple of times in, in Putney. And often he'd come out afterwards, uh, whether it was to turn meals. We were talking about turn meals the other day, weren't we? And uh, and uh, trade and um, uh, warriors. I think he came to a place called Warriors, which was also at turn meals, just a different night. And he used to come. Uh, we'd have a, a, a like a kind of after party, if you see what I mean. We used to call it a chill out. We used to call them a chill out. That's where you'd been out all night long dancing and then you all went to someone's house. You know, sat there and watched the telly and just talked gibberish like we used to do in the 90s there. So I'd like to dedicate today's programme uh, to the memory of Joe, who died uh, unexpectedly uh, at the weekend there. All right, good luck to you, Joe, and uh, uh, may you rest in peace. Welcome along, boys and girls. Welcome to our little show. Um, I'm once again disappearing here under a mountain of paperwork. Um, it, it just keeps coming. Now, this, this lot, this lot is from a remortgage I'm trying to do. Now, um, uh, I'm a, a, a landlord, as you well know, and now and again, I, I, I have, I haven't got so much mortgage now because I've been paying them down over the last uh, 17 years, but I've got a couple, and every couple of years, I remortgage to get a better deal. And honestly, it used to be as simple as picking up a phone to me, financial advisor, and saying, OK, um, two years is up now, nearly up now. Can we remortgage that? And he'd do all this work. And then literally he'd say, right, OK, I'm sending you some paperwork over. Just sign it and send it back. That's how easy it used to be. Now, the forms that I have to fill in. Oh, gee. And, you know, you, you finish a form, you send it back, you think that's good. And then they throw another spanner in the works. This is the third one now. The third one, and they want to know all the ins and outs, everything about you. It's a nightmare. Anyway, I'm just finishing that one off, and I'll, I'll, um, I've just got, I, I sent a little email because there's a bit on here that says, um, what bank account do you want the money to be paid into? Well, I don't want the money. You know, the money has to go to the mortgage that you're already in to pay that one off to start. This one. Do you see what I mean? So I don't want the money. I couldn't understand. Well, why do they want my number? And uh, the financial bloke says, uh, well, just in case there's a little bit left over, sometimes I think, um, I don't know, calculations or so Where's my pen gone? Calculations or something like that go not quite exact and you might be left with a few quid or something. We're not talking hundreds of pounds, probably not even 10 quid. But, you know, everything, everything has to work out in finance, doesn't it? Everything has to work out to zero. So... Um, they might have to send me six quid or something ridiculous like that. So, yes, I have got to put my details on there after all. But the, the paperwork just goes on. I can't stand paperwork. You'd think if you had, like, a financial, independent financial plot, they'd be able to do that. For, well, they used to be able to. Now it's endless forms that go on and on. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it's been um, quite a good weekend with work. Last night I came home. as a massive storm as I came out. Oh, it scares me. I find lightning absolutely fascinating, but also very scary at the same time as well. Did you have a storm where you were? 
I got a bit of rain coming into London. I was working in Camden Town last night. Uh, we did our third outing at the Camden Eye, which was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it couldn't have been any better, put it that way. It was really, really good. Maureen turned up. Maureen, who comes to Central Station with a nice bar of chocolate for me last night, which was very unexpected. Thank you very much, Maureen. Yum, yum, yum. Lots of lovely new faces in there. It's very, like, young people type thing in there who are a little bit boisterous. Not nasty, just boisterous. And it was a great night. Really, really good night in there last night. So I was quite pleased about that. Um, on the way home, I stopped at the SO Garage for a subway. We got a 24-hour subway. It's just the beginning of the M4. You kind of come off the road, the, is it the A4? Yes, you come off the A4 that leads to the M4, and it's just there on the Chiswick Roundabout, 24-hour subway. And you can sit in there. I always sit in there, you know, I order my toasted cheese, whole meal, 12-incher, and I have all the vegetables on top, cucumbers, lettuce, tomatoes, lots of onions. I do like onions. I love onions, raw onions, red. I think they look with like red onions. And I sat there and ate those and wondered what my breath would smell like afterwards. I had a cup of tea and a bag of crisps as well on the way home. Came back here and I thought I'd just watch a little bit of television. And my friend, uh, Anthony, actually, his name is Anthony. Now, he used to work, but he was very important in the tax office. Oh, he, he used to love that job. The best part of that job, he said, was catching people. You know, you haul them into the office and uh, you say and you ask them all the questions. Is there anything else you want to tell us? And they say, no, nothing else you want to say. Are you sure? No. And they get these, this power and go, OK, well, what's that then? And just chuck it down in front of them. <laughs> it's like a rabbit in headlights. <laughs> anyway, he suggested he does. He's actually retired now. He's the same age as me, but he's retired. You see, you save up a bit of money and you can retire early. You can either spend it all when you're young. And have a, a, you know, have a blast. I don't have to work until you're... I think the youngsters have to work till they're 70 years old now, don't they? Is it 70 now? Anyone who's sort of 18 or not... My nephew, Jimmy, who turned up last night at the karaoke. How fantastic is that? That's the third time he's done that now. He just appears in a puff of smoke. Jimmy and his mate, George, turned up at the karaoke and I made them sing. <laughs> they sung Chelsea Dagger. Because they're Chelsea supporters, they came down to um uh well they they had arranged to come down to the Chelsea parade, which is basically a coach that drives past, and all the all the pretty little footballer boys, you know, waving on there before they go and have their hair done. So I mean, not real men are they? Footballers? Come on, they're not real men footballers anymore. Not the likes of George Best and people like that. They were real men. These are like pretty boys doing their hair and. Modelling underwear and all this sort of thing. They're pretty boys now, aren't they? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few of those in our gay in our gay pubs. Huh? <laughs> anyway, he came down to do all that business and watched the coach go by and waved at them. Of course, it didn't happen because they cancelled it after the um, the ghastly, uh, the terrible Manchester bombings last week. Uh, but they came down anyway because they had their train tickets and couldn't get a refund. Uh, so he came down. Uh, there was Jimmy and uh, his mate George, and they sang Chelsea Dagger. Chelsea Dagger. I'm not sure if that was the right one to sing, sort of sing in North London, but they got away with it. <laughs> Excellent. I was so pleased. To say, I love it when he does that. He just appears and he says, hello. He stands behind me and says it, because he's taller than me now. Hello. And I turn around and he's there. I think they were looking for girls last night, to be honest. Although I'm not quite sure that the pink shorts that my nephew had on were sort of attractive to girls. I, I, pink, he had pink shorts on last night. Not George, Jimmy. <laughs> anyway, they got the train about, uh, I think it was about nine o'clock, and I texted them, are you on the train? And yes, they were. Yeah, and off they went. But of course, 20 years old, you know, don't need looking after. No, no, we're all grown up now. Don't need looking after, do you anymore, eh? <laughs> all right. Um, so that was the cams and I last night. I told you I had a nice subway on the way home. Ah, oh, yes. And when I got in, I thought, I'll watch a bit of telly. So I made a cup of tea and I had a Slim as World chocolate bar. Now, my friend Adam the Plumber, as well you know him from on here when he comes on here, Adam the Plumber gave me a whole bag, I haven't got it in here, of different Slim as World chocolates. Now, these chocolates are so big. Um, 
Yeah, a little bit bigger than my finger. But they're delicious. Only 97 calories. 97 calories. And I had one of those with a nice cup of decaffeinated tea after clearing up after the cat. Cat wasn't too messy last night, actually. It was only a little bit of wee on the paper. No poo. Actually, she hasn't been yet today, which is worrying. Possibly by the time I finish the show today, I will go downstairs and there's going to be a mess. I did put her out in the garden this morning for an hour. I woke up. And what time did I wake up? Quarter to eight, dear. I can't, but I'm not one of those people that are laying in bed all day long. I'm sorry, I can't do it. No, no. Are you not? Don't tell me you're still in bed at the moment, are you? Come on, I know it's a bank holiday. Please, I've been so lazy. No duvet days. There were no duvet days when I was a child. What's all that about? Oh, oh I think we'll have a duvet day. And they get, they don't even get dressed. Dreadful, dear. We was always out doing something. Duvet days, please. Are you having a duvet day now? Come on, get up and get dressed. I don't mind if I'm on in the background for five minutes while you get dressed. Get out of your beds now. Don't be so disgusting. Laying there, looking at me in that tone of voice. Get up. So I put the telly on. And um, it was my friend Anthony who suggested I watched Hospital People. Now, this is a comedy show on the telly, which I've recorded two or three of, and I hadn't watched any yet. So uh, I've turned it on. And um, the opening, you know, little pictures and that opening credits were all running. And I thought, oh, this looks quite good. And all the stars were appearing there. And then, and then it said, special guest star. Russell Brand. Well, I turned the thing straight off. I can't bear him. He looks like he needs a bloody good bath and a shout. He's the most disgusting person ever. And all that stuff he said on Radio 2 uh, a few years back. You remember that? About that girl. Just such awful man. Ghastly man. So I didn't watch any of So I turned it straight off and deleted all the rest of them. I can't... And I can't believe the BBC have put him back on. Russell Brand, eh? L lefty lover. Known as a lefty lovey. One of those lefties... Who are all about poor people and then go back to their mansion again. I mean, as you know, I'm in a mansion anyway and I don't do the whole poor people thing. <laughs> Can't bear him. Off that went straight away. So very, very disappointed. I have to say, I watched a little bit of it before he, um, before he appeared. I got further than the opening credits and there was a little bit going on. I think someone had um, uh, passed away in the hospital, but it was oh, it, it and it was very serious. And and the opening line, I think, was she said, "Well, of course we get people pass away all the time in the hospital, but this was a staff member, so it's serious." And it's all a bit like that. And it was kind of mildly amusing. I wasn't laughing. I wasn't falling off the chair like you would with Dad's Army or something like that. It was sort of oh. Uh, meh, meh, meh. Whereas Dad's army, yeah. I mean, I have to keep pausing Dad's army because I laugh so loudly. I miss, I miss what they're saying next. Oh, that's another thing I meant to tell you. I'm noticing now with certain programs, certainly the drama in particular on BBC. I don't know who's 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 mixing the sound on there now. I just can't hear some of the words. Now, I've mentioned this before. I put the subtitles on now. Is anyone else doing that? It's uh, Doctor Who the other day. Doctor Who the other day. The monk, who were the monsters in this particular episode, they were like mumbling. I couldn't hear what they were saying. I had to put the set. Did anyone else put in the subtitles on? You've usually got a, a button on your remote control. Not for the whole show, just bits and pieces. What did he say? You know, and you run it back. You still can't hear it. Then you run it back again and put them on. The only thing is I don't like leaving them on because I find you start looking at them all the time and then you miss the programme. I went to an opera. Um, was it last year? I think it was last year. And, of course, it was all in foreign. I don't know what language it was. Um, but at the top... Of the, op of the top of the stage, massive stage. Now, where was this? Uh, London Coliseum. <clears throat> At the top of the stage, they've got this LED little red letters things that come up and trying to, quite cleverly, translate what is on the stage into what it says in English so you can understand what's going on. But you don't want to be sitting there, you know, after paying, I don't know, 60, 70 quid for your seat and you're sitting in an uncomfortable seat, incidentally. I'm not comfortable in these places. 
Oh, my ass goes to sleep. Does yours? It's more comfortable in a cinema than a theatre, I tell you. Anyway, so you're going like this, and you can't just be looking at this red thing because you miss everything going on on the stage, don't you? And it's the same with subtitles. I don't like to leave the subtitles on all the time because you just stare at the bottom of the screen. You miss what's good. You miss all the great monsters and all the wonderful pictures going on in front of you. Anyone else do that? Does anyone else use subtitles? There's a question for you. Let's say hello to some people who are with us this morning. Good morning to Rod Brown, who says, Hello, Chris, I'm just about awake. Good, Rod. Excellent that you're up to No duvet days, Rod. Let's not have any of that, please. Good morning to Sean Michael Crabtree. Morning, Chris. I almost booked Barry Manilow, but booked myself Justin Bieber ticket in Cardiff on the 30th of June. Well, you could have had Barry Manilow as well. Surely, Sean. <clears throat> Work a little bit harder, lovey, and you can buy two tickets for two concerts, lovey. Eh? Justin Bieber. I can see the attraction. Funnily enough, I was talking to a bloke uh, who was at the karaoke at the Camden Eye last night. Um, young bloke. And uh, I think he, 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 for some reason, Justin Bieber came up and I said, how, how amazing is he? Right. Because he was this little spotted boy who, you know, done baby, baby, baby. In, and that little, little boy voice. Baby, baby. I don't think his voice had broken at the time. And then he, I think he had a couple of other songs out and then he kind of went on this drink and drugs and spitting at people and all that. And as far as we were concerned, it was all over. Then he disappeared. And he came back with that album, you know, Sorry and all that. And wow, he came back with all this credible music. How fantastic is that? What a turnaround and, and top marks to him, especially for his body. Oh, my God. Have you seen uh, Probably a little bit young for me, I would imagine. But my God, how can you have a body like that? I think even when I was younger, my body was not like that. Although it wasn't far off it. Tattoos and muscles and shining and all that. But not an ounce of fat, Sean. I can see the attraction, lovey. But you should have got a ticket for Barry Manilow as well. Although all the good ones are gone That You know that's not till September next year, don't you? 2018. Oh, yes. I think I've got a full throwback right at the end. My friend Wendy, kindly, because I was on holiday at the time, so Wendy bought me the ticket and I uh, sent her the money. Yeah, I'm sure I'm back, full throw right back right at the edge. Not not as good a seat as I've had before, but the front row tickets were going for like eight, eight, nine hundred pounds. And I'm not paying that to see any show. I'm sorry. Even even Shirley Bassey. I, I'd love to go and see Shirley Bassey. I wouldn't pay nine hundred pounds for a ticket. That is just outrageous. It really is. But there you go, one of those things. Good morning to Gary Davidson. Morning, Gary. Uh, Shania's with us this morning. Morning, Shania. Uh, Mark, good morning. Karaoke Mark says, morning. Off to work at Wembley on this warm bag holiday, but it's time and a half pay. Well, you're lucky, Mark. <clears throat> you're very lucky to have time and a half pay, my friend. I thought all that finished years ago. Certainly in pubs. None of the pub staff get time and a half pay anymore, you know. Used to. It's a sh it, 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 it bothers me how low bar staff are paid. It really does. Years ago, of course, you know, if you got a job in a bar, the pay was always not good. But you'd get a room as well for nothing. You know, so that could be worth to you £100 a week just to have the room. There were, there, all these pubs would have room up, rooms upstairs and staff would live in the room generally free of charge. And then some idiot decided to start charging them rent. And then the council tax people got involved and all this, and it's it's not such a good deal. So now the bar staff, uh, generally all the bar staff I know, get very bad pay, uh, minimum wage or, or less at some places. I know a place that play, pays less than minimum wage and none of them pay tax. It's disgusting. It really is. They get caught at some point. Nowhere where I work, I just know of this place. They get less than minimum charge and they're treated really badly by the manager as well. It's disgusting. Disgusting. So you were but but the whole time and a half pay for bank holidays, that went a years ago, my friend. When I was working for BT, um, if we worked on a bank holiday, we used to get two times pay and a day off. And it, and Christmas Day, you would get three times pay and two days off if you work Christmas Day. That was when companies um, 
you know, respected their staff. Doesn't happen anymore, Mark. You are really lucky, my friend, to get time and a half pay at work today. <clears throat> How was your karaoke last night? You should have come down like, oh, it was packed. It was fantastic in the Camden Eye last night. Isn't it funny? A job finishes, another one starts. Talking of job finishing, boys and girls, uh, this is the week. I wasn't going to tell you this because the last thing I'd want is for loads of people to turn up that I haven't seen for ages. But I don't think anyone, or if not, not many people, watch this show who come along. So my Thursday night, I just spoke to the governor last night, is going to finish this week. It's my last Thursday at, uh, in, at the place I work at in Clapham. And quite honestly, I'm so relieved I am. They're going to open till three o'clock in the morning. And uh, I really don't want to do that. But if you know me, I've been quite unhappy um, about working until two o'clock there anyway, because it's my la latest night by far, by two hours. Every other night I work now finishes at midnight or before. And then on Thursday, I've got a two o'clock one. And by one o'clock, I'm like, oh, God, <sighs> I'm a little bit like that. So I'm so pleased that one is finishing. I've been there since 1999. Um, when when I leave somewhere like that, I mean, have I left uh, many places? Let me think. Where, uh, yeah, a couple. But when I leave somewhere, I don't like a fuss made. I really don't like a fuss made. Don't want any leaving party. I just want to walk out the door like it's a normal night and that's it. I won't miss it, to be honest. There are jobs that you miss and there are jobs that you won't miss. Now, that's not to say that I hate it. That, that would be incorrect in saying. It was just a job. I don't hate it. Don't dislike it. But it was just a job. It was always just a job. I got. I, I, I used to work at the Black Cap in Canada. I was there um, 18 years. And when I left there, and I, I knew it was time to leave. And when I left there, um, I was missing it as I walked out the door. I really did. Uh, two of the Blues' places I worked out also. Uh, Blues' in Hammersmith and Blues' in London Bridge. When I finished there, I, I really missed those places. So there are some places that you really miss. Other places were only ever a job. And I, I joined the two brewers in 1999, um, coming from a very successful uh, thing at the Black Cat, where, where I still was. And of course, it was completely different. And I just thought, oh, I don't know about this. I don't think I'm fitting in in here. And I never have thought that I fitted in in there. So I'm glad it's going. I'm really glad it's going. And of course, good luck to the next person that takes over until three in the morning. I mean, it'd be someone younger anyway. I do feel sorry for my mate, um, Adam, actually. He works at the Two Brewers. He's like the main, I was the main DJ once there. And he kind of took over uh, that as I as I uh, dropped nights and moved elsewhere. Because you can't stay, you shouldn't really stay in one place for a long time as a DJ or karaoke person. I think probably probably about seven years is the maximum you should stay somewhere and then you should move on because people get people get fed up with you in the end. It doesn't matter how although no one ever got fed up with Barry Manilow, did they? Huh? I could go to all the concerts in you know, two weeks worth of concerts and I could still sit there listening to the same songs and the same talent. So maybe maybe that's not quite true. But I think really for a DJ or karaoke person, I think uh, you, you should get seven. You, once it gets going, you should get seven good years out of it if you're lucky. After that, if you see it dropping off, time to go. You know, so that's it. So there we are. Um, one excellent night has started off, Cam and I. And one that uh, one that's going on too late. I'm fed up with it anyway. That one um, is uh, is time to go. So and you must you must never be sore about leaving somewhere or indeed being got rid of. You know you have to remember the thousands of pounds that have been paid to you over the years by whatever company is concerned. But as I say, don't don't hate it. But I won't miss it. It won't be somewhere that I miss when you leave. Maybe it's a little bit like moving, isn't it? I'm sure one or two of you have moved before from a place that you were in that you loved very much and all this. And for some reason or another, you had to move. Maybe uh, the landlord needs to sell the house or you need to sell the house and perhaps go down one or, or, or get somewhere bigger. And you don't want to leave, do you? Huh? 
But other places you think, oh, you know, I've gone from there. Thank God for that. And this this is one of those. This is one of those. Uh, don't hate it, but thank God it's finished sort of thing. And the last one will be Thursday. Please don't turn up. I can't stand a big bye bye, everyone. Bye. No, nope. the, the night will finish. I'll walk out the door and that'll be that end of. <laughs> Uh, good morning to... Uh, so, Mark, yeah, you were missed at the karaoke last night. You should have come. Uh, Ray says, good morning from the Mirable Studios in Woodford Green, Essex. Happy holidays. Heidi, hi. Heidi, hi. Ray will be down at the karaoke tonight. Karaoke tonight, boys and girls. It's Monday night at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Come along there. Uh, good morning to Kelly Kim. Morning, Kelly Kim. And Kelly Kim says, I miss you. Oh, I miss you too, Kelly. Kelly Kim um, has come to lots and lots of karaoke nights that I've done. Uh, the most recent one being in Sydenham, uh, but we finished in Sydenham. Um, the Sydenham one uh, had a period where it went really well. And then for some reason that no one can explain, it just died. And it happened overnight. You know, we were, we were getting busier and busier. And then we got to sort of a good number of people. I mean, a really good number of people. And we got, I think, nine months of that. And then all of a sudden, it's bang. They just stopped coming. And we couldn't work out. And I still don't know why that happened. Anyway, that was in Sydney. That would have been back in last last August, last July, August. Anyway, we struggled on week in, week out. And then um, in December, I think it was December there, um, the owner, Tony, Tony and his son own the place, Tony and Gary, um, I said to, to, to Tony, I said, I don't think this is working anymore. I said, if you want to knock it on the head, that's fine by me. And he's looked at me. He said, well, when do you want to knock it on the head? I said, I'll leave it to you. He said, make it next week if you want. I said, OK, well, thanks for the work anyway. And that was it. But then Gary came and said, well, let's go monthly. Try it once a month. So we did try it once a month, but it didn't really happen. You know, uh, Kelly Kim, indeed, and uh, friend Laura came every week. Um, now and again, we used to have uh, uh, people... Um, from like a, a theatre school come along. But it just wasn't busy. And it, it's doing what I do was, as I've said so many times before, it's never been about the money. Honestly, don't, I have, I've done very well, don't get me wrong. But it was never about the money and still isn't. And if you go somewhere and it's a little bit soul destroying, if, if no one's turning up or whatever, you, you have to do it at first to get a new night going. You've got to be very lucky for it to, to work straight away. Now, that has happened with the Camden Night. And there has been several places over the years that have just bang, they worked straight away, like within like the first week. OK, but generally, you've got to you've got to try something and keep it going for six, nine months net these days before you see it working or not. Well, we kept the, kept the Sunday going for about a week, uh, for about six months. And it didn't happen. So um, uh, the Cams and I one came out and um, I said, thank you very much to Gary and I left. Um, I, I do miss uh, the, the Gary, who's, uh, and Tony actually, uh, the owners of the place. But there you go, you know, if, if something's not working anymore, you have to go and that's it. Otherwise, it's just wasting your time, wasting your time. Uh, good morning to Diane. Morning, Diane. Jason Lewis is there. Good morning, Jason. Terry H, up nice and early. Good morning. Uh, Passaro B. Passaribo. Is, now, is that how I say it? Passaribo. I hope I'm saying your name right. Maybe you could text us a little message and put it phonetically, as it sounds, so I can get your name right, OK? Who's listening in? Doha, Quata. Qatar. I think I'll be going next time on a um, a Middle Eastern airline. Actually, when when I fly again, I'll probably not be going on British Airways. They are in a mess. My God, are they in a mess? They really are. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, Sean Michael Trabzi says the tree is broke. What tree is broken, Sean? Is that? <laughs> I've got a tree in here broken. What tree is broken, Sean? What are you going on about, dear? <laughs> Do tell us a bit more. Jason says, I love that garage. Oh, the BP one. Oh, no, the DSO one at the beginning of the um, uh, M4. Huh? Oh, it's all in there, isn't it? It's always the, the very friendly Asian man on the till. I, I, I say friendly, you know, with tongue in cheek. He's always so bloody miserable, isn't he? 
<laughs> when you go in there, I, I go in there for sort of one packet of crisps and you get, get the one pack and then it says two for one pound 20, you know. So you end up buying two crisps. You have them both in it. I just have the one bag now. I keep the other bag. But I don't, and you finish one bag and start eating the other one, don't you? Am I right? Do you have a subway in there as well, Jason? I hope you do. Uh, Kelly Kim says the loudest thunder I ever heard last night sounded like an explosion outside and it shook the entire house. Was it the thunder that shook your house or did you have your boyfriend around there again, Kelly Kim? <laughs> Terrifying. Woke me right up. Poor cat shot under the bed, bless her. Oh, I wish my cat could move that fast. All she does is walk round in circles, Kelly Kim. Poor old soul she is, dear. She's got dementia, my cat. Will she, will she be hit by the dementia tax? That is the question. Am I going to have to sell my house in order to put my cat in a care home? It's very, very worrying. This is a strong and stable program. Remember that. This is not a coalition of chaos in here. We are strong and stable. Who's trying to call now? Oh, it's my sister. Do you mind if I just take this? It's my sister. Just a moment. Morning, sis. Hello. We're just on air at the moment, sis. I'm talking to millions of people all over the world. I rang you earlier because I had the music on and I didn't want you to miss it. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> That's my sister. She hates the countdown music. That the, there's two countdown musics. The first one that comes on at five minutes, you know, do 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 do. do. She hates it. So I always ring her up when that's on, so she doesn't miss it now. Mm. Um, Tanya's there. Good morning, Tanya. Hope you're well today. Shania is still in bed. Oh, come on, Shania. Up, up. There's breakfast to be had, dear. Breakfast. It's breakfast time with Shania Steele. And Chris Reardon. I think we should host our own breakfast show, Shania. Huh? Every morning, 6.30am. Can you get here for that time? Huh? Me and you doing a Shania breakfast time. Yes. Like the sound of that. Johnny Pablo Morrison. Good morning, Johnny. Who is also just getting up. Oh, come on, Johnny. Wakey, wakey, sir. Are you still working at Halfway to Heaven? I think that's where you work. Incidentally, I'm looking for Thursday gig now. I don't think I want to have two nights off a week. I'm looking for a Thursday gig, either a quiz night or a karaoke. Not DJing. I'm fed up with the DJing, OK? Quiz night or karaoke. If you know anywhere that might want a little karaoke night on Thursdays or a quiz night on Thursdays, please let... Or Tuesdays, either Thursdays or Tuesdays, then please let me know. I would be interested in doing that, all right? Uh, Sean says, I love duvet days watching movies. Not today as working later. Hey, well, you just sit on that tea for hours on end watching the telly. No, there's more to life than that, dear. Good morning, Dan Ellis. Long time since I saw you, sir. From 286 Bar in Lewisham. There were new, no duvets when you was a child. No, you're quite right. There wasn't. We didn't have duvets. You're absolutely right. They didn't exist. Like computers. That didn't exist either. Lots didn't exist when I was a child. Humanity. Rudeness. Rudeness didn't exist when I was a child. Generally, no one was shot or knifed when I was in child when I was a child. I think it was a better time. Although the lights used to go out occasionally. Yes. On the miners' strike, the three-day week, which uh, Mrs. Thatcher destroyed, didn't she? <laughs> Do you remember the three-day week? You'd be sitting there watching watching an episode of Doctor Who and suddenly all the lights would go out and the candles would come out. But it was great. It's better than it is now. It was. Except I wouldn't have been able to talk to you. I mean, I would have, there was no internet, no webcams, nothing like that. I would have had to come round, knock on your door and give each and every one of you a personal show. Do you know, I think you can do that with girl, with certain girls and boys. You can pick up the phone and say, could you come and do me a private show? And you pick them and you pay them £200 and they come to your house and do whatever you want. Wonderful, isn't it? What a, what, what a, what a novel idea. <laughs> good morning to Alan Russell, who says, good morning, Chris. I got caught in that dreadful rain last night. Did you? I'll still be there tonight. Yeah, but you're lucky, Alan, because you've got a bald head. So surely when the rain hits it, it just like comes off the edge, doesn't it? Like a roof. <laughs> if you've got air, it gets stuck. The little droplets get stuck and you get a head cold. You're lucky because it just slides straight off your bald head, doesn't it? Morning, Alan. Look forward to seeing you tonight, sir. Uh... 
<laughs> You're right, Johnny. Gary Butler, nephew Gary Butler's with us. He was down in London yesterday as well. I think he must have got the earlier train or he was at his friend Paul McElroy's, Mac McElroy's house. Oh, does anyone do floor laying or want to learn floor laying? I don't know, but I did notice, and you, you'd need to be in southwest London. Uh, someone, I think, is looking at taking on possibly an apprentice. Send, send me a private message and I'll pass on your details uh, if you want to learn about floor laying wooden floors. I think that's what it is. OK, I might be a little bit wrong, but if you're interested, you haven't got a job and you might want to be a floor layer, a floor, not laying. Or, no, Sean, not no one wants you to go and lay on their floor, dear. It's not the weekend. It's the week now. If you're interested in laying floors and you want to do it as a job, send us a private message and I'll pass on your details. I don't know if the job is still there or not. OK, uh, Jason got up at four o'clock in the morning, still in bed. No, you see, I can't do that, Jason. Jason only lives down the road from me. Uh, he's got a big um, disco. Is it you? Is it you who's got the big disco business? Vans and weddings and all. Oh, I, I used to do all that. I just I lost interest in the DJ. Isn't it funny? I don't know why I lost interest in the DJ and Jason. I just did. I, I just love doing the karaoke now. Love doing the karaoke and the quiz nights. I really do. Um, but honestly, four o'clock in the morning. I actually I woke up about half past seven. Once I'm awake, that's it. And you know what's what's even worse? What's deadly if you wake up and think, oh, I'll just turn the phone on and check that. Once you've done that, that's it. You're wide awake. You've got to force your eyes closed. Use tape. Use tape. Look what I found the other day. Christmas tape. Look at that. I never bought that. Look, little Christmas trees on there. This was my mum's. This is like 30 years old. I found a bag of various cellar tapes and that in a bag under my desk. <laughs> Funny what you're finding it when you look around. Um, Alan says, I was up at three o'clock in the morning waiting for your show. What you <laughs> Did you want a show at three in the morning? We can't do three in the morning shows. I'm dead by then. I can't do late nights anymore. Uh, Dan says it's your old age. You're probably... I'm 54 now, Dan. When was we at 286 in Lewisham? That was a bar we was working at, wasn't it? Did the karaoke down there on Sunday nights. Uh, Alan says he uses subtitles as well. Yeah, don't you find some of the talking on the telly now? What they say, what they say all the time. I'm a bit like that. Uh, it's nothing to do with my old age, though, Dan. I'm sure it isn't. Good morning, Carmel Ridgely. Morning, Carmel. Hope you well. Went to school with her. Primary school. Sacred Heart School in Roehampton we went to. Morning, Carmel. Uh, Callum's there this morning. Good morning, Callum. Alan says, wish there was a remote I could use for my child's mother. Put her on mute. Oh, I know what you mean. Oh, t talking of which, I was in the hairdressers with my mate uh, Eden, Eden Barb, as it's called, in Bracknell. That's that's where we've been going recently. I'm not sure if I'm going to go back there now because he's a bit rough with the clippers. Do you know what I mean? Now, I have, it's, it's time for another haircut now, actually. I have a 0.5 all over. But this, and he's a nice bloke, don't get me wrong, but he's a bit, mm, mm, and it hurts my head. It it actually hurts my head. And I've told him twice now, I said, you're going to have to be a bit more gentle. He said, oh, you've got a sensitive head. Well, yes. And I'm not sure. In fact, as I'm sitting here talking to you now, I don't want him to do it anymore. He's had his chance now. Do you know what I mean? And I... <laughs> I didn't want to go back to the other ones because they put the price up three pounds in one go. It went from 11 to 13. Uh, at, that's at the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's still 11. But the point is, I went on a Friday and it went from 11 to 13. And he didn't tell us until it was until it was done. You see, I think that's a bit unfair. But I think I might go back to him unless I can find another one round here. Hmm. Um, Callum says I need to try Cam's and I karaoke. Yes, you do. I think you'd like it in there, Callum. Bring your girlfriend along as well, OK? I shall make you feel both welcome, as always. Callum is still in bed. That's the other Callum. Callum on the Isle of Wight is still in bed. Oh, ca wake him up, Vectis. Wake him up. All this laying in bed isn't doing anyone any good. Jeez. Uh, Craig Hards. Good morning, Craig. You've become a regular person on my Facebook, haven't you? Good morning, Craig, who says, watching you at work today in the office. Oh, OK. Have you got a little earphone in? Is there an earbud? Is there an earbud in your ear paying full attention to whatever's going on? Huh? I'm sure there is. Alan says, Callum's in love. Oh, my love, 
There's only you in my life. Are you in love? We can come up and sing love songs to each other. Please do not sing certain love songs. I will always love you. I hate that. And I will always love you. Please do not sing. Please don't sing. You're my hero. And please don't sing. But you're my lady. And you are my man. Please do not sing those songs at my karaoke. You won't be able to sing them. No one can sing those songs. They are just ghastly and awful. They really are. We've got a call coming in from Isley Widget. Good morning, Shania. Ooh. Hello. Good morning, Shania. All right. I'm fine, thank you. Lovely to hear your voice, dear. I hope you don't do any of those songs at karaoke, do you? I don't sing at karaoke anyway, so... <laughs> oh, you should. Why not? I'm here as well. Oh, Vect, is, is this like a, a two-way conversation? Are you on two telephones at the same time? No, I have. You know, we're uh, testing our outside broadcast equipment. So oh. we're, we've got we've got a four-channel mixer here with wires oh. and mops going everywhere. And we've got, um, what is it, um, um, Tassimo? It's like a coffee uh, machine. A Tascam. No, it's a Tassimo. Oh, Tascam. Very good make, dear. Very yeah. good make indeed, Tats Cat. You won't go wrong with one of those. Let me tell you, boys and girls, Vectis hosts a radio show. Vectis and Shania host uh, radio shows on uh, Vectis Radio, which is a station on the Isle of Have you got your FM licence yet? Uh, we have. We're just at the 12th of June. We should find out what our um, frequency, well, not frequency, the, um, yeah, it is frequency. Yeah, frequency. frequency, yes. You're not on the DAB, are you? No, no, it's far too expensive and what have you. So we've just got a little limited power um, FM license that we're about to get. We heard from Ofcom, they've got a frequency in mind. They're just going through uh, testing it and making sure it doesn't uh, upset anyone else. And they let us know and then we can uh, order our transmitter. I never realised that, every, I suppose it might, it's obvious really, but every transmitter, you need to know your frequency before you build it, haven't you? So it's obvious oh. really, but... I didn't know that. I thought there was a little like some sort of rotary switch, and you could you would select the the frequency that you're on. So that, so it's actually built in, and you can't change it. Yeah, evidently, evidently, you can't uh, manufacture. Or you can't you can't get your transmitter manufactured to you know your exact frequency. Uh, whether that's just the way that works with us, or whether it's a technical reason, I don't know. But uh, oh, yes, it's I all very exciting that. times. I didn't know that. And how much is a transmitter then? How much, what you, is it sort of? relatively inexpensive in in relation to other things or what um we did have a we did have a meeting about it because you know i'm just uh i'm just an employee as it were obviously the station's yeah. not mine so it's more down to the board of trustees are in the expense but i think um everything from um you know new stationery to all the technical stuff it's costing us about ten thousand pounds it's quite an eye-watering amount of money but uh, we do have the money in place amazingly so oh uh, okay so can you because you were having a bit of trouble raising it did it come from various different sources or did you have a couple of big uh what's the word benef that's a good word isn't it benefactor benefactor yes, did you did you yeah. have a couple of rich benefactors i think it's a couple of rich benefactors i think which What's is that? uh which which is uh, quite nice. I think we'll have to pay them back, but it's quite a long term loan. I think it's. Right, uh, okay. I was I, I, I was surprised by the the piece of equipment, which I forget what it's called now, which actually says who you are. You know, if you're in the you've got your radio on, and it says um. Oh, the R, 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 RDS encoder. That's the one. Yeah, that that was something silly, like about four grand or something. I think what, just for a little. It only looks like a skybox. Oh blimey! But, why, uh, do you, why do you need one of those? Oh well, I don't know. That's uh, so. That's out of my hands. That's uh, that's what they they uh, see me. The, li the little words. I, so. I tell you what surprised me, Vectis. Uh, the fact that internet radio hasn't really taken off um, like we thought it would have done. Uh, in cars, people walking around with little devices like um, like Walkmans on. You just don't see them at all, do you? I mean, we we listen to a little bit on the rate on the on the computer now and again. I've got an app on my iPhone, TuneIn Radio, um, which I'm sure you've heard of. Millions yes. of stations on there. I, I listen to, believe it or not, a hard house station and a, a, a religious station as well in the car sometimes. Um, and with now, which the, what's the station now? It might be LBC. Actually, LBC sometimes on the DAB. They they are national. 
but now and again I'll get a dropout, especially in Lincolnshire near my sister, so I have it on the phone. And yet, it's it's hardly ever mentioned, is it, online radio, really? It didn't take off like I thought it would do. No, I don't know why, really, because I think I've mentioned on your show before that I live in uh, Upper Ventnor on the Isle of Wight, which is quite a hilly area. Although, as the name suggests, Upper, we're a lot higher up than the sort of lower town, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. So we're settled be, um, behind uh, St Boniface Down, and that plays havoc with uh, FM uh, it, really, frequencies. Yeah. So a lot of the time when I listen to, uh, you know, Radio 4 or anything like that, I listen online anyway. So online radio is sort of second right. nature to me, yeah. even if I'm into a conventional. But I don't know. I think people just um, – takes a lot of time for people to accept change, doesn't it? Yeah, I, don't know I, what. I believe there is actually one for the car, an internet radio radio for the car. Um, not quite sure how much it costs or anything like that, but I believe you can actually get one. I've never seen anyone with them, though, never. Talking about how much things cost, I'm actually, uh, believe it or not, I'm actually speaking to you um, from, well, from an actual, one of those whizzy sports mics, you know, one of those lips, oh, lip mics. Is that the one you got right up to your mouth? Do you look That's, like Dickie Davidson, but with a bit of extra weight? Well, I look, well, I look like a right dick, but I'm not sure about the Davis part. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention me. I was going to mention Frank Boff, but he got into some serious trouble, didn't he? And the orange in the mouth business. <laughs> no, what it is is we do um, uh, it's quite a first for Vectors Radio. We actually do a uh, live broadcast now from our local speedway track at um, Ride on Isle of Wight. Do you do the commentating for that? I, I do. Well, really? both Steve. I do. Yeah. Gosh, you, do you know all about the fast cars and all that, do you? Well, it's, it's sort of motorbike racing, you know. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. Right, OK, yeah, motorbikes. But, 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 yeah, we sort of supported it sort of off and on since it's uh, for a long time on the island now. Um, so it's sort of last year I've done a lot of recorded stuff from there. Yes. And it's just sort of rest from there, really. It sort of made sense to uh, sort of um, combine two hobbies. And it's, it's um, a two-way street, really. They, right. It gives them... Publicity, especially for the away fans that don't travel to the island because we have a lot of away teams, obviously. Yeah. And um, it's good for us because it's good for our community FM license because it shows we're getting involved in the uh, community because they do do an awful lot of community stuff out there at the White Link Raiders. Uh, Warriors. Warriors. I do beg your pardon. What, the they... what? The Raiders? What are they? That, that's a team. That's what they're called. The the, the ra Raiders were, well, I think. The, the um, ice hockey. Yeah, I always get them. Oh, ice up. hockey. Ice hockey. Okay. The yeah. Warriors of Speedway. Warriors. Yeah, like... Warriors. I like that name, Warriors. I used to go to a club called Warriors. That was all hard house and dancing all night long. Yes. Warriors. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, it's quite funny, really, because for someone who, uh, if you uh, tell me your name, I've normally forgotten it in five minutes flat, and that's about you screeching around a track at 70 miles an hour. It's quite... And it... trying to pronounce the names as well. Yeah, of course, there's, a lot of po <laughs> there's got a lot of Polish riders in... Um, well, just, cha people. just change their names. John. Jack, Mark, change the names. That's well, what they, that's what they do. That's Zach what, Bitnick or something. Well, that's yeah, well, what they Bitnick. do at the Indian call centres. You ring in though, these Indian... Oh, good morning, Mr... Uh, I, I can't do the accent. <clears throat> Would you like me to try and do an accent? Shall I try? Yeah. Good morning, yeah. Mr Ridden. My name is Jack. How may I help you? It's like that. And they're all English names. No Indian names. What? What's all that about? They change their names. I think you should do the same for the motorbike riders. Was that called a Scottish, by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Do I sound Scottish? Well, have a nice day, you two. Always a pleasure to hear from you. Yes, we will do. We'll now shut down the uh, Vectus Radio out station in Upper Ventnor. We'll... And go back to bed. And go back to bed. Thank you for your vote, Isle of Wight. Good night. <laughs> she's going back to bed. I can't believe she's going back to bed. Come on. 20 past 10 in the morning, Shania. Please. Dear me. Dear, dear me. Um... Let's have a look. Uh, Call Callum says, come to Nottingham to do karaoke. You will love it. I'm sure I would, Callum. But the problem is getting up to Nottingham for like 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock at night. That would just be impossible. It's bad enough getting into London here from 8 o'clock. It's got, it's got to be at least three hours to get to Nottingham, surely, Callum. I don't know. I could try a one-off there. You find a venue for... i tell you what, Callum. You find a venue that wants to do it on a Tuesday or a Thursday and I'll try a one-off there, OK? A one-off to see how long it takes to get there and back. There you go. 
All right, I'll try a one-off in Nottingham just to see, because if it's going to take two or three hours to get there, it's just blooming pointless. It really is. So you can find somewhere in Nottingham that wants to do it for like, I don't know, a Thursday, a one-off for a Thursday or a Tuesday, and we can try it and see what happens, all right? Good morning to uh, Christopher Woodhouse, who joins us this morning. Uh, morning, Christopher. He was at the karaoke last night. He sang, uh, can you feel, I think the, the Lion King one, wasn't it? Can you feel the love tonight? That one. And then he says, sorry to hear about the loss of your friend. Yes, it was, um, it was very, that was just un completely unexpected, uh, Chris. Very, very sad. Uh, Callum says, my girlfriend wants to meet you. Well, I, I don't know about that, Callum. I'm not really doing meetings at the moment, although you can have a meeting. £25. £25 for meet and greet I'm now charging. <laughs> That's cheap. It's a thousand dollars to meet Barry Manilow, you know. Although he says all the money goes to charity, which is fair enough. But a thousand dollars. I'm only going to charge you twenty five pound, Callum's girlfriend. All right. I think that's fair enough. Yes, bargain. Um. Yeah. Look, there's another one here. Alan says I will never DJ again. It's so boring just sitting there pushing buttons. Ah. Uh, yeah, I agree. It is. There's no interaction with people anymore. And you try and interact, they look at you like you're from another planet, don't they? Good morning to Stephen in Australia. Morning, Stephen, sir. Good day to you as well. Or good night. You're just about to go to bed there, I would think, wouldn't you? Uh, Leon Colligan is listening at work. Good morning, Leon. Are we on a loudspeaker or a little earphone bud somewhere? Chris reckons I should get my own clippers. I don't know if I could do that. Can, is it is it really as simple as just doing a... Because you have to do the shaping and all that. I don't think I'd be very good at it. I mean, I can't put a hole in a wall. I can't even... In, in front of me, you can't see this. There are various holes in the wall which... <laughs> which I've drilled over the years. And they they came out too big. So I just... So I just drilled them somewhere else, but I never filled the holes in. There is one... Two, there's one... Two, how many? One, two... There's about, there's two holes in front of me there. There's one up there. <laughs> there's, there's a few little holes behind the screen there. <laughs> I'm just so useless at DIY. Uh, morning, Kevin. Morning, Kevin. Last night was very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Dickie Davis with the big moustache. He was my favourite sports present. World of Sport it was. Wonderful tune. It would start off with this clay pigeon shoot. It would go bang. And it would go ba 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 da 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 Do you like the theme music to World of Sport? Do you want me to find it? I have that on my system, actually. Thank you. It's all here. I've got everything here. I've collected all this stuff over the years. Let's see if I can find it. World of Sport. One moment, please. Searching the system. Here it is. Yeah, World of Sport. I love this. Isn't it lovely? Listen to this. Oh, yeah. Ba, ba, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's got a very, very good ending. Let me move it along a bit. Listen to the ending. Is the, here comes the ending. One minute. Here it comes. World of Sport, we miss these programmes. Wonderful programmes. And the reason you don't get World of Sport or Grandstand anymore is because of all the pay TV channels. <clears throat> we used to get all the sport, all the boxing, all the football, cricket, tennis. It was all free on either BBC One Colour, BBC Two Colour or ITV. Thames Television, wherever you were in the country. Now you've got to pay. But let me tell you, if you didn't pay... It would soon become free again. Close down the Sky Television. That's what I say. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Shania's decided not to go back to bed. Thank God for that, Shania. Find something productive to do, darling. Make some jingles. Go make some jingles for your little radio show. That's a good idea. Huh? Alan says, what's your favourite TV, TV theme? No question about it. Dallas. Ba 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 ba. Absolutely, Dallas. There's my favourite TV theme. 
Um, Ray Reynolds says, loves the themes. Eamon Andrews did World of Sport first. Now, I didn't know that. Really? Of course, Eamon Andrews, he moved on to... I didn't know he did World of Sport. I know he did the Today Show on Thames. And that one with the red book. This is your life, he did, didn't he, Eamon Andrews? What else did he do, Ray? Anything else he did? By the way, there's a phone line open. If you want to call in, you can do so. 020-8144-3477 is my local London number, OK? 020-8144-3477. Or you can Skype in. My Skype name, United Kingdom Talk. If you don't want to call, that's fine. Just sit there and listen. No problem with that either. Uh, Chris loves Doctor Who. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, and um, another excellent episode on Saturday of Doctor Who. They've got these monsters at the moment, the monk. Very, very scary. They're like walking corpses. And I'm looking at those. Looking at those corpses thinking, one day I too will be a corpse. Hopefully I'll be able to walk around like that and scare people. That's what I'd like to do. Thank you. Anyway, one of you mentioned Qatar Airlines earlier, and I think... Probably next time I think I'm going to go with a Middle Eastern airline like Qatar or um, what's the other one? Emirates. They've got a very good name, haven't they? Singapore Airlines, I think, have got the best name. But British Airways is falling apart. They are absolutely falling apart. I have always flown with British Airways, but I've got members of their staff. I know quite a lot of uh, cabin crew. Um, and even you speak to them now and they say it's all over. A lot of, lot of People I've known working there have now left. And they tell me, next time I fly, he said, don't fly with them. Go on Virgin or somewhere else because it's all falling apart at British Airways. Uh, on the BBC News uh, site this morning, it says uh, British Airways passengers are facing yet another day of uh, disruption at Heathrow Airport as the airline deals with the impact of a worldwide computer system crash. BA says it aims to operate a full long-haul schedule at a higher proportion of short-haul. But it's not all of them, is it? What do you mean, higher proportion? So is it my flight, or is it not my flight? It's disgusting. <clears throat> you could argue that, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't foretell some sort of computer problem like that. But for God's sake, wouldn't you have thought an organisation like that would have a couple of backup plans? Not just one, a couple. It's not like a budget airline, is it? And I think that's where the problem lies. I'll come on to that in a minute. Cancellations and delays affected thousands of passengers of both Heathrow and Gatwick on Saturday. All flights operated from Gatwick on Sunday, but more than a third of services from Heathrow, mostly to short haul, were cancelled. A statement said its uh, IT systems were moving closer to full operation capacity. It's, it's dreadful. Dreadful. And people were sitting there. And you say the problem with is airports, if you've gone through this security area, you're not allowed out of it again. You're all, you're, you are absolutely trapped in there. And to go back out again, you've got to get your passports and they have to queue again and all this old business. It's so much mucking around flying. Give up. I'm telling you now, stop flying around the world and start taking your holidays in your own countries. It's not just the British Airways. I mean, all the airlines suffer these problems all the time, don't they? And it seems to be more... I mean, how many times has you... I say this touching wood. I say this now touching wood. How many times has your car broken down in the last five years? Now, I ask you that question. Similar question. In five years of flying, how many times has there been a problem? I bet you've had a few. It's so inconvenient. I got fed up with the whole mucking about of flying. Queuing up, lining up. Have I forgot my ticket? Ryanair's the best one, isn't it? Oh, Christ. If you forget the, your ticket, they'll print one out... Oh, what happened then? Did something happen then? Are we still here? <laughs> I just kicked something over here. Just a minute now. I think I just kicked my main computer. I don't know if we're still there or not. Anyway, um, Ryan is the best one. You forget to pick out, print out your ticket. They'll do it for you. 100 quid. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, 
<clears throat> the story goes on. BA added, at Heathrow, we have operated virtually all our scheduled long-haul flights through the knock-on effect of Saturday's disruption. We apologise to customers. Now, as I say, sometimes problems occur and they're unexpected. But an IT fault, a massive IT fault, due to one power outage, really? No backup in place or a backup that didn't work. So how can it be a backup? You should have two or three backups. Surely a massive organisation like that. In the Daily Mail this morning, I think we found the problem. It goes on to say this morning uh, in the Daily Mail, you might imagine that on the most chaotic day in history, British Airways would have made a vague effort to go the extra mile. This is written by Robert Harden. Uh, British Airways will try to go the extra mile. You may have thought it would try to make life just a little bit easier for hundreds of thousands of passengers left wondering what on earth they were supposed to do and where they were supposed to go. They had no idea. They're standing there in the queue. No one's telling them anything. British Airways. Do you remember British Airways in the 70s and the 80s? World respected airline. Fantastic service. But no, not anymore. <clears throat> it's their bank holiday weekend as well. Bang on eight o'clock on Saturday, normal office closing time. They just turned off the phones. They simply switched off the phones. They did not turn them back on again until yesterday morning. Not that anyone was answering anyway, leaving the exasperated travellers of a thousand cancelled flights. My family go among them to stew. The story goes on in the Daily Mail this morning. Throughout Saturday, the biggest crowd in Britain was found to be neither at the English nor Scottish Cup final, but at Heathrow's Terminal 5, like tributaries of the Thames. Queues to join queues gradually grew into sweaty estuaries of human confusion. I mean, can you just imagine? I mean, I would have gone home. I would absolutely have gone home. And that wouldn't have been easy, especially if you'd have driven there, because you would have driven there, Parked your car in one of those pink elephant car parks or whatever they got there at enormous expense. You know, £200 to park a car for a couple of weeks. It's outrageous. Why on earth are you flying anywhere, people? Why? Why'd you put yourself through this? They had nowhere to sit. <clears throat> people stood in line for hours for not want of anything else to do. No point was at any sort of coherent announcement. Instead, there was a sporadic, conflicting and often false advice from a handful of BA staff bold enough to break cover. At one point, I was struck by two things, says this bloke. On one hand, everyone was being astonishingly social and polite in the circumstances. Last week, horrors in Manchester probably had a lot to do with that. Many people were in tears, including one of my children, but there was no fighting. On the other hand, the time has surely come to remove the B, as in British, from BA. This clapped out demoralised shadow. And when they say it's demoralised shadow, is right. Because, I, as I say, I know British Airways staff. And they are really demoralised. It's this bloke running the thing. A bloody cost cutter. A cost cutter, boys and girls. And it never works. When will people understand that cutting costs doesn't work? I've seen it in pubs and bars. We used to have some stupid woman running um, Mitchells and Butlers. Years ago, this is. And she only understood how to cut costs. Fortunately, she didn't stay long after she'd mucked up the whole thing. She went off to Pizza Hut. <laughs> from area manager of several pubs to Pizza Hut. I mean, there's a step up if you've ever seen one, isn't it? All they know is how to cut costs. It goes on. For this weekend's global meltdown was not some sort of random rogue incident. It was the latest and most alarming sim symptom of collapse at an outfit, British Airways, that should be on every broker's sell list when the markets reopen. Last year, the airline was crippled by a succession of terrible 
uh, IT collapses in March, June, July and September, though none on the scale of the weekend's total meltdown. It is consistently under the threat of strikes from a workhorse of which many are clinging to cushier conditions that their counterparts on budget airlines with fresh action plan for the summer. Yet at the same time, British Airways has decided to go down the budget route by scrapping all free snacks and charging £2.30 for a cup of tea. That, I know that's on the short line, uh, short haul. I don't know about the long, long haul. According to the Daily Mail, he's, he doesn't say short or long haul. But there we are. You see, they, they've scrapped all the free food and drinks. You, we've always had that on planes. A bit of a meal. All right, it's a bit plasticky. It doesn't matter. Bit of a meal and a couple of cups of tea. I mean, Christ almighty. <clears throat> he said he can't imagine flying, anyone flying with BA this weekend will feel remotely inclined to book with it again. Well, I mean, I've seen the stories now. I've seen what's, I've seen what's going on uh, since I last flew with them. Last time I flew with them, I was, uh, went to Israel. And it was a good flight. Good flight. In the business class. Well looked after, I can't complain. But since then, the stories I've had from people, they actually now dislike working for British Airways. It's terrible. It's terrible to see such a great, well-respected thing go down like that. So, um, I'm trying to find that. But it turns out that the bloke that's running it, and I'm trying to find that, I think I might have pulled up the wrong story, actually. Um, let me see if I can find it. There we are. No, that's it's the wrong story. So the bloke who runs it, Robert Hardman. So where do you think he came from? Big organisation, something like that? No. He's a Spanish bloke, but that's neither here nor there. He used to run budget airlines. Hello, I think I found the problem. He hasn't got a clue how to run a huge organisation like British Airways. He is another cost cutter, a bean counter, an accountant, who clearly has no idea about customer services whatsoever. Get rid of him. Get rid of him and put someone there who bloody well knows what they're doing. How can you have someone... Employ someone <coughs> who's run budget airlines, EasyJet, Ryanair. OK, you know, I wouldn't go on a Ryanair flight. I think it's like a cattle market. I wouldn't go on one. But they do their thing and people go on there. You know what to expect. You know you're going to go on a Ryanair. You know, you know you're going to pay peanuts for it. And you're going to get peanuts. OK, they're probably just as safe as the British, as, as the main airlines. A budget airline has to be as safe as, as a main airline. But don't expect a cup of tea. Don't expect to be comfortable. Don't expect to be spoken to in a nice way, perhaps. And don't expect to be able to carry on anything more than a coat and a really tiny bag that you can just about get one handkerchief in. <clears throat> but you know that to expect that from Ryanair and EasyJet. You know that. This is the sort of airline that this bloke's been running. And they gave him the job at British Airways, you fools. You absolute fools. And it's I think it's all over unless they do something very quickly. They need to replace him straight away, this bloke Robert Hardman. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Next time, I'll be on one of those Middle Eastern ones, you know, um... Emirates, they got a very good name, haven't they? Emirates and uh, what was the other one? Is it Qatar, 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 something like that. My mate Ron flies by them and he's never, I don't think he's ever had a complaint. Although I think he lost his bag or, so, or had a bag damaged. I don't know what airline that was with a little while back. And he was very unhappy about that. Anyway, that's a British Airways story. Uh, let's do your final messages. I'll do the birthdays and then we'll disappear from here this morning. Uh, Chris Woodhouse says, a cost cutter like Theresa May. <laughs> oh, Chris, don't be slagging off our Theresa, darling. You know I take a very, very dip. Uh, that's it. Your sound's going to be bad tonight, Chris. I'm going to muck up the lights and sound when you're singing tonight. <laughs> you do your Labour thing and I'll do my Conservative thing. All right. <laughs> 
on this strong and stable programme. Yes, strong and stable. Or is it a coalition of chaos like British Airways is now? I can't believe it. It makes me sad to see such a wonderful organisation as it used to be torn to pieces by some bloody cost cutter. So angry, so angry. Kelly Kim says, what happened in the day when there wasn't a computer check-in? Surely they had that, or is it the capacity issue? Never rely on PCs. I do, do you know, I don't know, Kelly Kim. It, it was all bits of paper and things, wasn't it? Bits of paper and all this. And of course, you know, we've been warned about this sort of thing for years. Here's the worry. Here's the worry. OK, so that was an airline. OK, you know, if you were booked to go somewhere in the last, well, three days it is now, then you've been unlucky, really unlucky. But this is a computer issue. We had the thing with the NHS a couple of weeks ago, the virus in the computer or whatever it was. Some, you know, you know what I mean. We had that. Very much more serious, that. But if they can do this problem with airplanes and NHS, what about everything else? What about electricity? How is that run? Presumably all by computers as well. Something goes wrong, all the lights go out. We could be seriously in trouble here. This is just the start of it. We've been warned about this for years. When computers take over, it'll be all well and good. But what happens when something goes wrong? You've got you've had the proof of it over the last two weeks. Isn't that and is that a bit of a coincidence, do you think? Two big things to go wrong in the space of a couple of weeks. What's next? What's next? The water. Is that run by computers? Maybe a computer, I think they put chlorine in water to kill all the bacteria and stuff, don't they? What if the computer goes wrong there and no one notices and too much chlorine is put into the water? Do we all get poisoned? Very, very worrying. At least while you're watching this show, you know, if the if, if something goes off in here, it's not too bad, is it? You wouldn't be too disappointed. But what if you're in a hospital and the electric goes off and you're halfway through an operation? Not good, that is it. It's very worrying. I think you're very, very worrying. Very worrying. All right. Um, Heidi. Good morning to Heidi. You sat in hospital this morning, aren't you? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Heidi. Get well soon. I don't know what's wrong with you, darling, but get well soon, my love. OK. All right. Uh, let's have a look. Mary's joined us. Good morning, Mary. Mary. Are you back off holiday, Mary? Are you popping into the karaoke tonight? I do hope so. Let's do today's birthdays, and then we're going to uh, disappear, boys and girls. I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm a little bit late for my pills this morning, but that's all right. Uh, happy birthday today to... Oh, it's only one. Gosh. One, but we had 11 yesterday, didn't we? Happy birthday today to Tom Millington, who is 38 years old today. Tom, I haven't seen you down to sing at one of my karaoke's recently. Where have you gone, dear? Are you going elsewhere? I'm mortally offended and hurt. We're singing to you, Tom, all right? Here we go. Oh, hang on a minute. That's, that's World of Sports still, isn't it? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Well, one boy and girl. Tom, happy birthday. I could have sung Tom then, couldn't I? And I think I'll do it again, actually. I'll do it again for you, Tom. Here we go. I'll, I'll use your name this time, all right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Tom. And come and sing at my karaoke again. It's been too long, sir. Just a couple of late messages. Uh, Jason. Good morning, Jason Alexander in London, who says, uh, was impressed. Oh, Jason, I'm leaving the two brewers this Thursday. I finished this Thursday, just in case you're interested, all right? Uh, Jason says, I was impressed with Ryanair. Oh, wait, OK, fair enough. If you were infest, impre infested, impressed or infested? I wonder if they got rid of the ants in the church that I mentioned yesterday. <laughs> 
We got ants in the church. Someone's someone's taking sandwiches and eating them, probably while the sermon is going on and we're all all our eyes are closing. Morning, Jason. Uh, and Mary says, see you later, Mr. Chop Chop. Welcome back, Mary, to the United Kingdom. I hope your flight was better than a lot of people at the weekend, dear. All right, that's it for the show today. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight, it's Monday night, so it's Bank Holiday Monday karaoke, and it's not going to cost you anything either, or at least not much. Free entry, as always, at Central Station Bar, Wharfdale Road, tonight for Monday karaoke. That's in the King's Cross area. Starts at 8, finishes at 11.30. And also, being a Monday, even though it's a Bank Holiday, we got cheap drinks. You no need to spend more than 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds, darlings. You come and buy those cheap drinks, OK? Tonight, karaoke and every Monday at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, 8 till 11.30pm, along with the cheap drinks. Enjoy your Monday, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Cheerio now.